All right, so we are rolling. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today I have another just special guest on, um, Cody Shreve. He's one of my good hometown friends back from Garrett County, where I currently still teach, uh, but I've since moved away, but we stayed in contact, and Cody here has kind of um, allowed that environment in Garrett County to thrive as far as uh, numbers of power lifters, and I know that community has really grown. So I wanted to introduce him to you all to kind of share some insights. I know he's got some good ones, and there are some big things in your future ahead. So do you want to introduce yourself to us, Cody? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm Cody Shreve. Uh, you know, Tristan and I have known each other for, my goodness, quite some time now. It's crazy to think that, like, we were yeah. in – in the gym together back in like 2016 you were prepping for i'm trying to think what meet that was it was the it was nationals it was usapl nationals in georgia or atlanta yes yeah, it's georgia. Yep, that was 2016 yeah yeah and um you know it just happened to um we had we both were like pretty pretty crazy with like our training like we would thinking back i don't know how i ever did it like going into the gym it was always late it was always like late at night it seemed like Yep. And, you know, and you and I had just like we had I feel like we knew like who each other like were because it's weird in a small town where it's like if you if you work out a lot, everyone just assumes that, you know, everyone who works out like I couldn't tell you how many oh, times for people, sure <laughs> you know, somebody comes up to me and it's like, hey, do you know this guy? He lifts weights. <laughs> it's like, yep, I, yep. Mean, I get the but, same thing still. <laughs> yeah. And what's funny is that, like, for the most part, it's true. Like it, it's just, it's weird how it works out in a, in a small town, you know? And, um, but no, like back in 2016, us in the, in the same weight room together. And then, um, and then after that, wasn't that when you did, you did the Arnold, it was that, it was that winter. Was it that winter? Uh, so my first Arnold was March of 2016. And then I did the Arnold again, March of 2017. So maybe that's, the one you're thinking of timeline wise. I am thinking of the one in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember <laughs> it was the summer of 2016 where, um, I had got like, like my first like powerlifting equipment, like my old strength shot belt, which by the way, I still have. And Emily still uses on all yeah. of her sessions. It's crazy. Cause like every belt that we've had since then, and we've had a couple of them, uh, Taylor had a belt. It it busted. Emily had one. It busted. We had purchased a camo or friend of ours purchased a camo belt from Strength Shop. It busted. But my red one, man, it's still like holding the down. Yeah. Back. Were those leather belts? Yeah. And it's just that the, busted. Or? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just um this the red belt's just like a chrome lever belt that back when you could get those belts for like 50 bucks. And it's yep. still Still going strong, man. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's like a relic. I know my belt's from 2016 too, so I know that. Uh, like, it's almost a superstitious thing. Where it's like has to be my belt. I actually had mm. to replace my lever this year. I uh, stupid of me. I one of the little pins that holds the lever in had like just gotten loose and it slipped up. And I didn't notice it, and I like cranked it tight, and I just bent the pin. So oh, I okay. on your SPD held SPD. Yeah, but it wasn't like way bent. It was like just enough that I couldn't get it back down into the the slot, so the belt wouldn't shut all the way. And I was like, no, of course. It was actually like three weeks out from nationals this year, and oh uh, panic yeah. email to SPD. I was like, I do not want to have to replace my entire belt. Like, it is formed to me at this point. And they were like, nah, no worries. We'll just send you a lever. And they had it to me within like three days. Oh, nice. wow. Oh, yeah. Shout out to SPD mm -hmm. on that then. Because my goodness, between that and... Because I listened to your um, your interview on King of the Lifts. And man, you had quite a few mm -hmm. things kind of pop up there towards the end. Uh, so I didn't, <laughs> yeah, I don't nothing ever goes that. perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Because the belt didn't end up being a big deal. It was like it broke on a Saturday, and because they were so responsive, you know, I had it by my next heavy session 
the following Saturday. So honestly, it didn't throw off training at all. And uh, it's just one of those little things that's like, good thing I've got some good people in my corner. Right. Absolutely. And is that the belt that you um had, like, you do, like, tally, like, however many, like, sets of squat that you do? I always thought that was so cool. I got to come up with, like, yeah. a quote or something to write on the inside of my <laughs> belt. Something that's not, like, not so cliche, but something that, like, every time I put it on, I can just kind of look at that and... Yeah, you can look too, at it, get that motivation. It is way too late for me to do tallies, man. I've I missed I missed that trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no backlogging them at this point. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. I know uh Ray Williams, he was my inspiration for that idea because he he does tallies for every thousand pound squat that he does. So I guess if you wanted to, you could do something like if you have a milestone, 300 kilo deadlift or something along those lines, Mm -hmm. that could be an idea. Um, I landed on the one, which it bites me in the butt because it's a lot of work. But for every 50 working reps of squat, I give myself a tally. That's crazy. How many tallies are you up to now, man? Um, I don't know the tally number. I know I'm at 19,000. (laughs) <laughs> reps because I'm getting close to twenty thousand, and I'm excited for that that tally. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nineteen thousand, yeah, that's that's incredible, man. And it's just like like the age old saying, like when somebody sees you, like whether it be doing a, a feat of strength or looking a certain way, or like even just like having like a like a nice car or something, and somebody hits you with it, must be nice, you know. <laughs> like I think we have some, some like we've had some people like that just in the gym that I go to. I actually had a guy like straight up come up to me and be like, "Must be nice." And I think I was just warming up on deadlift, and I had hit like yeah. four or five for a single, and the guy was like, huh, "Must be nice." I'm like, "Must be nice." Oh, because I could I just came out the womb able to deadlift four or five, and you know so. <laughs> Those kinds of people, I never waste too much time on giving, like, like over-explaining myself. But, like, mm-hmm. you know where I was in terms of levels of strength. Like, obviously, like, my deadlift is is my best lift of, of the three. But, like, I also remember, you know, just a fun fact on me, but um, trying to get past the five-plate barrier for me was very difficult. And I remember vividly failing 11 consecutive times. 495. Wow. And what made it worse is that when you get to five plates, you're no longer in the realm of like the next hundredth. So like, even then I was like, man, even if I get this, it's still not 500 and I still can't get it. And when I finally got it, when I finally got it, I was like, I was like super happy. But then I'm like, I gotta, I gotta put a two and a half on here and go for five. And I was able to get it on that same day, which was really cool. But but no, it is yeah. funny to look back and, you know, you, you realize like time does kind of fly by, especially when you are training, you know, five, six days a week. And, you know, sometimes you get yourself stuck in a rut mentally where you feel like you're not progressing. Like, I don't know. I feel like we all probably have moments like this because we're I feel like strength is not just an art form, but also a form of intelligence because you are. Mm hmm learning how to teach yourself how to call upon because as you know like you could have all the muscle in the world and not be a super strong guy you know and even if you're strong enough to move a weight like if you don't go up to it and like be in touch with yourself both mentally and physically that weight might not go because up here wasn't synced with you know below the neck and uh yeah it's a skill Mm-hmm. but no like the amount of times that i've failed you know a one rep max attempt on on all lifts or just, just not or just feeling like you're not progressing or you know you know how strength is sometimes you have your ebbs and your flows where like this particular yeah. training block everything seemed to go right for me i mean anytime you do any of these max effort sets you know i feel like there's always going to be something that you look like that you see in terms of like form breakdown or something that doesn't look you know, the, the cleanest or the prettiest, but, you know, being able to will yourself through some of these, I really like how 
um, you know, my training program does it with like the rep PR attempts instead of putting so much emphasis on going for a one rep max, but just like, all right, we're going to see how many times, you know, shoot for a, an RPE 10 set of like three or five or six or, you know, the first couple of months into 2023, it was all like, it was all like hypertrophy training. So I was doing these crazy volumes of, of workouts where I was doing like 10 sets of eight on squat and, you know, and then like peaking off with like, okay, you're going to do a max effort set of eight. And then, then you're going to do nine back downs of eight <laughs> and good luck. <laughs> and then I get yeah. to finally doing five reps or four reps. And it's like, oh man, now I feel great. And I feel like, yeah, you know, I, you had a, you had a great, uh, a great, um, saying when it comes to powerlifting, it's literally an eternal game of delayed gratification. And that's what right. I tell, yeah. yep. that's what, it's what I tell a lot of people, like, and when it comes to training, like, yeah, you can shoot for those one rep maxes to like reaffirm your own beliefs and where your strength is. But, you know, every time you do that working rep, that working set of, you know, your 75 to whatever percentage, you know, even if it's below 75%, you know, just doing skill work, you are, you are investing now to build things up for the back end, and, you know, practicing technique and all that gets you where you need to go. Yeah. And just to add on to that, I, I think strength sports and powerlifting is lumped in there. Um, it's like the perfect trap for um, people who are, aren't looking for delayed gratification because the noob gains, so to speak, are so fast in the beginning. Right. So you've got this like immediate shoot up where you're hitting PRs maybe every week, monthly. And it's so fun and exciting for that first like few months. And then there's this tapering that happens. And um, I would call it like a logarithmic curve. So for the viewers, a logarithmic curve is like a exponential curve that looks like this that's turned sideways. So it kind of starts up fast and then levels off. Um, and hopefully if you train long enough, that leveling off like still goes up, but it doesn't compare to that beginning first shoot. And I think that's why we have so much drop off uh, with young people. And like, I don't know what you've seen and I'd be curious for you to share, but at least for me, I see a lot of people come in really enthusiastic about the gym and maybe powerlifting, maybe they're thinking about wanting to try a meet and their strengths just shooting up. And then they hit that curve after their beginner gains where it starts to level off. And that's where you really earn your stripes. And they're like, ah, this isn't as fun as I thought, or this isn't what I thought it was. And that's where you start to lose people. What's your experience with that? So, I mean, I have first off, like I have firsthand experience with that because I'm sure you did as well, but like we were there, you know, I, I mean, you've been doing mm -hmm. this a longer time than I have, you know, I was still like, you know, very deep into my world of Warcraft and RuneScape days back when you were benching 315, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've had so many people ask me like, did you play football in high school? Did you run track in high school? No. I couldn't catch a football in high school. Yeah, and I think that makes your story even better, honestly. And, you know, I took I took weight training as an elective. And, like, I was, I was 15, and I had just, like, for some context on me, I was not, um, like, I wasn't born, like, at least I don't feel like I was born with any, like, genetic gifts. You know, I've got crazy flat feet. I high-five the floor when I walk. You know, I was as a freshman in high school, I was I think I was 89 pounds. And I was like, didn't, wow. even, didn't even hit my growth spurt until like, I think I was like a like late sophomore um, in high school. But I did take I always enjoyed exercise, like to be quite honest with you. And this is going to sound like a little nerdy, but it's OK. I wear it with pride. But ultimately 
what got me into wanting to work out, wanting to exercise, wanting to push myself was Naruto, the the show. Okay. And I remember I, I liked the show. It was fairly new. I was like, I don't know, 12 years old when it came out, seventh grade, eighth grade. And I remember just watching a fight scene and it got me so amped up. I just started doing push-ups. I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> you know? And I mean, I, I, yeah. ate, I ate horrible. I, you know, drank horrible. Like I didn't like take care of myself at all. Um, at the age of 19, I was actually diagnosed with shingles and osteoarthritis in both of my knees because my, my diet was horrible. Um, I worked at McDonald's for four years, like, so, uh, junior in high school all the way through, you know, about 19, well, about 20 years old. Um, I worked at McDonald's. I was eating their food all the time cause I was a broke college kid and, you know, yep. didn't get a whole lot of sunlight. And apparently when you don't sleep great, you don't eat great. Uh, you don't really get yourself out in nature very much. Um, the body kind of falls apart. And what's funny enough is that this all happened around when I started training. Like to go back to my high school days, uh, you know, I took weight training as an elective. It was fun. Um, I enjoyed doing it, but I didn't have the greatest experience simply because I was like by far the weakest guy in the class. Like I got out benched by three girls by the end. Like, you know how you do like your three rep maxes at the end? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and like back then, you know, there wasn't like a whole lot of like, I, t I took a lot of shit for that. You know what I mean? Like just took it on the shins. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and I still, I still see that a lot in high school as well. Um, I find myself reprimanding students for like giving other students a hard time for what they're lifting currently or whatever mm -hmm. or what they lifted their first time in the gym and i'm like whoa, whoa, whoa wait like i bent i couldn't bench 95 pounds mm -hmm. you know my first year in the gym you Gosh, know so I see you reprimand you i would love to see you reprimand like, <laughs> some shithead kid it's like hey see your your one rep max i can do that with <laughs> double pneumonia and an amp like amputated left arm like let's let's cool it with <laughs> 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 but um but no so uh finished weight training uh sophomore i put on 20 pounds so like during that mm -hmm. like i must have did something i mean in terms of i mean i know probably puberty made a difference as well as like lifting weights for the first time in my life and then i never went back to training weights until i had my moment um, and my moment is I was 19 years old. That's kind of when things kind of shifted for me. Um, mm -hmm. I was, um, in a relationship with whom I thought was, you know, my, like high school sweetheart, love of my life. You know how that kind of goes, you know? Yeah. And, you know, she didn't want to be with me anymore. And, uh, I just couldn't accept that. I, didn't have the the mental discipline or fortitude to just be able to take that. So instead of that, I just went internal and just kind of self imploded and decided to just say, screw everything. I'm just going to do whatever I want. You know, I stopped trying in college. I stopped, you know, caring about, you know, my own like health mm. and wellness and started smoking cigarettes. I remember going into sheets to buy a pack of cigarettes, not even knowing what I was going to get. I just wanted cigarettes. So I walked up to the counter. Oh, and yeah. Like, I would like a pack of cigarettes, please. And she was like, what kind? <laughs> and I, I look at the wall and there's like so many to pick from. I was like, <laughs> the red one. So she gives me a pack of marble. <laughs> and, the red one. And, and uh, um, I got halfway through that pack of cigarettes because, like, for the I felt cool. I'm not gonna lie, I felt super cool because, like, I could like take smoke breaks with my managers at work instead of just having to True. be inside yeah. while everybody took smoke breaks. And my managers were all like, uh -huh. at, "Like, Cody, why are you doing this to yourself?" And I'm like, "You literally, I've I've worked here for four years and you've smoked every single day. Like, what do you mean? What am I doing to myself?" And yeah, my moment came shortly after that. And it was, again, I was halfway through this package of cigarettes and I, um, 
I have, I just, I went to Walmart one day. I don't remember why I had nothing better to do. I'm just walking around the store and I just happened to find this tub of protein powder that was not where it was supposed to be. And it was like body fortress, mm. disgusting, gross, yeah. like whey protein. I can picture that exact tub of protein. <laughs> the bright orange. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and yep. I just was looking at this container and I'm like looking at it. And of course that back then, like they would throw like the weirdest science that they could on these things. And like, mm -hmm. I had a dinky little weight bench set up at home that my mom had actually bought for me and my brother, but we just never used. And so I'm like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, you know what? Like I just had this gut feeling. I was like, just, just take it home. So I took it home. I worked out. I chugged down. I didn't even have like a shaker cup, so I had to stir it with a spoon. And like, I didn't even know to use Ooh, like mil milk yum. or anything, so I just used like water. It was horrible. But after that, man, like, <laughs> I was I was hooked. And that was again. That's I never did finish that pack of cigarettes, you know. And uh, that's that's kind of where things started for me. And that's awesome. What was funny, and I, I am going to get to your question. I'm horrible at rambling, so you can reel me back. Oh, up. no. No, that's what this is for. Mm -hmm. Just letting the thoughts go where they may. And um, so I purchased my first supplement. And my a friend of mine uh, down the road, uh, Ben Vanderbilt, if you're listening, this is about you, buddy. Um, I'm going to make him listen to this, <laughs> so, you know. Uh, I, <laughs> okay. I texted him and I was like, look what I got. And I just sent him this tub of protein. Well, he like immediately walks down to my house. And when I mean my house, I mean my mom's house. Cause I was just living at home at the time. And he mm -hmm. was like, all right, if you want to be serious about this, these are the things you need to get. And he makes me this list. And there was like, I don't know, <laughs> 15 different supplements on there that came out to be like $700 a month. <laughs> oh like, my lord i'm like dude i work at mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, meanwhile i don't know if i can name 10 supplements like just in general <laughs> yeah dude i i can't i don't even think i could tell you like what these what like the names of the supplements were but um <laughs> i don't think i got any of them but uh but like i i learned i learned <laughs> along the way like what i liked and what worked for me and you know supplement i guess you could say supplement science has come a long way over the last 10 years and you know to where mm -hmm. like a lot of the bs has kind of been filtered out because i think back then you could just put anything on a label and you know people would buy it like yeah and i know they're not regulated by the fda mm -hmm. to my knowledge so it's like a little bit of the wild west going mm -hmm. on yeah and like my favorite was like if you take this pre-workout, you will like subjects increase their bench press by 23.6%. <laughs> like that's yeah. so specific, you know, but, um, but to, yeah. answer, but to answer your question though, um, in terms of like the enthusiasm, like, yeah, you know, when I, whenever I first started training and doing it consistently, you know, supplementing with creatine, starting to get all those newbie gains in terms of strength and just muscular development, you know, I had like pecs for the first time in my life. I had bicep veins for the first time in my life, which mind you definitely went to my head. Like it went to my head. Oh, so for bad. sure. And it has to by and, definition. Like I, I look back and in it, in it, and it comes from, I feel like it comes from a place of insecurity. Like, because now like I, I could care less if I'm wearing something. Of course I say this and I'm, and I'm wearing like a, a tank, but like, I could care less if I'm out in public in like a shirt that doesn't make me look big or like cargo shorts or something that make my legs look super small. Like, I don't care because people who know me know what I do and I feel like I don't have to prove myself. But dude, back then, like I had, I just like had to so carefully pick out like what shirts and stuff I bought because they had to make me look big. If they didn't make me look big, I wasn't wearing them. And if, I really liked them. I would just cut the sleeves off of them, you know? <laughs> nah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but no, so like 
eventually I outgrew my, my little home gym and my workouts eventually became unsustainable because mm -hmm. there was no such thing as like chest and back day, leg day, anything like that. I, I didn't know about any of that. So I just added to the list. Like if I discovered a new exercise or purchased a new piece of weightlifting equipment, I just added it to the regime. And then like, I realized that my workouts were over a thousand repetitions long and took me about two and a half hours to complete. <sighs> oh my and Lord. I was shredded, dude. I was shredded. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot of expenditure. <laughs> and, uh, and, but then like, I'm not eating great. I'm still working at McDonald's. Like I'm not hydrating. I couldn't care less about my sleep, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, I started going to the cark, um, and that was like, that was a game changer for me, like going to an actual gym. And so I trained there for a while with a couple of my friends. And when I no longer was going to Garrett college, I was like, you know what, I'm going to move down to Wildwood. You know, that was where all the, all the cool guys, all the strong guys went. And I wanted to be with those guys. <laughs> Um, you know, and so that was, you know, going into Wildwood was huge for me at the time. Like they had so much stuff and there were some really strong people there. And, um, uh, but the thing is though, like, and what was year was this at this point? So it's funny. Um, this, just this month makes 10 years that I've had a membership at Wildwood. 10 years. 10 years. Wow. So I've been in terms of like lifting weights, I've been doing it for about 11 or 12 years, but like doing competitive powerlifting and like really taking it seriously, I would say for about five or six years because, uh, back in like back then mm -hmm. it was just, it was just like bro stuff like arm day every day, you know, benching all the time. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of, like I, you know, I enjoyed the process of like splitting things up, like different body parts, but I didn't really love training legs. I think it's about the storm. I don't know if like the wind is like coming through my speaker at all. I may have to relocate to the front porch before I get rained off. Okay. But yeah, no worries. I can hear it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, not too bad. Mm -hmm. Um, one second here. I think what yeah, I might do the video is a little laggy, so that might be part of it too. Okay. I have um what I can do here. I'm gonna type your link into my phone and okay. take this inside. Can we do that? Yeah, yeah, should be good. Um, I will just keep an eye out for it to come through. Yeah, because it uh, it got dark very fast. <laughs> so I apologize to the <laughs> audience. Um, I cannot get your photo. Oh, to no problem. Do you happen to? Oh yeah, here I can just say it out loud for you. Okay, hold on. I'm I'm getting it pulled up here. Okay, what is it now? So yep, it's it HTTP. is HTTPS, yeah, StreamYard.com. Okay. Backslash H7P 4Q4 27C2. Okay, I'm coming in. Oh, I can see myself. All right, I see it. Okay, I want to mute that one. Let's see if we can do this. What's that? 
Good. Smooth transition. Yes. Score. Okay. I think this might be a little bit more doable for us now. Yeah. Once okay. you get set up, no, no worries. Oh, yeah. No problem. I'll just, I'll just pop in right here. So, um, okay, so what were we talking about? We were talking about, okay. So uh, we were talking about, oh, go ahead. Uh, we were talking about like the newbie gains and stuff. Yeah, and you said you were um, at the 10-year anniversary of Wildwood and about yeah. five years of competing. Yes, yeah. So my first competition um, I did back in um, 2017. It was the Baltimore Open over there at Exile Fitness there in Rosedale, Maryland. And mm -hmm. um, it, was a, it was a great experience. I'm really glad that... Um, I did it and that was like just me getting my dipping my toes in the water for with powerlifting for the first time and you know what a, a lot of people don't know is that the only reason that I got into powerlifting in the first place was because of you because you know we were seeing each other in the gym Oh, I don't know if I even knew that. <laughs> yeah, so dude, this was this all started with you, man. And so I Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we would see each other in the gym and we had that good like gym relationship like okay you've um you know i see you training hard you see me training hard now granted i'm you yep. know not anywhere near in the realms of like the numbers that you are but we definitely had a pretty intensive attitude and pace when it came to training and we took ourselves quite seriously in the weight room and um you know because from like over the years, I've what's funny, I have had some friends give me a hard time and say that uh, when I go into the gym, I turn into Jim Cody. And <laughs> like, okay. I feel like you feel like you know what that means, right? So like, you, you oh, go in the gym. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, because like some people, they, they do have that attitude where like, they're the same person, like, when they're training is like when they're just kind of like hanging out with some friends and whatnot. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but you know, once I really started trying to take things more seriously, I just found myself like, as soon as I took pre-workout, mm -hmm. it was like a flipped in my head and it didn't matter like what kind of pre-workout it was. Like I was never looking for the best and strongest, you know, product to get me amped up to train because I, I loved doing it you know, five, six years ago when I love doing it today. Like I, I still get this joy from mm -hmm. like mix, pre, mixing pre-workout out in my kitchen, you know, getting ready to go train and the drive to the gym, just, you know, getting it, you know, getting your head right, you know, listening to some music or whatever, you know, as soon as I walk in that gym, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm locked in, I'm ready to go. And yeah, I have my moments where like, I'll, I'll, I'll chat with some people, but you know, like yeah. my, my workout is what's important to me in that moment because you know and you know this just as well as I but like you can give somebody you know your time and attention and but like if you allow that to pull you away from your workout you know the only one who loses is you right yeah you know? and you know because ultimately like if you're if your workouts are getting messed up because you can't stay focused, you know, when you're in your end results, you know, you're not going to be able to be like, oh, I shouldn't have been talking in the gym or I shouldn't have been doing this or that in the gym. Like it's all going to be, you know, it's all going to be on you. Yeah. And I, I would, um, how I think about it, uh, were you much of a reader in like high school or do you have any books or magazines that you like to read? So I wasn't back then. Um, so uh, 2020, everybody's favorite year. Um, I had a, a New Year's resolution that I wanted to become a reader. So I did. I forced myself to read at least 10 pages okay. a day. And that turned into a like legitimate passion for reading. And I think since then I've read, you know, anywhere from 20 oh, wow. to 30. 
and um, something that I still continue to do today. And it, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. They're not all about like fitness and stuff, but I'm not, I'm not like a big fiction reader. Mm-hmm. Like I like about like habits and, yeah. you know, uh, most recently my, my uh, focus has shifted more towards like finance and like learning about business and money and stuff mm-hmm. uh, in terms of what I've been reading just, just recently. Oh yeah. Yeah. I really like, um, like Peter Lynch has some good, good books as well. I, I feel like we could talk about that, go down the rabbit hole, but, um, to kind of connect that. So I'm, I'll preface this with, I'm not what you would consider a reader probably. So like conventionally, I'm not a reader. I don't like to read books, but I like to read articles and like scientific articles i'm with you on the the fiction i'm not a huge fan i stick to the non-fiction stuff but what you were describing in the the gym that focus i i would almost think of it like intentionality right you go in with intention to get better in the gym it's the same thing with reading and i'm i'm sure you've experience this with how much uh you've read at this point you know how you can sit down with a book or an article or whatever it is and uh like actually read it but not get anything out of it do you know that (laughs) feeling i'm talking about you're like i've gone through three pages but what did i read and that drives me completely bonkers because like I've, <laughs> I've, I had, you know, ADD, ADHD, I was diagnosed with both as a kid. And like, that was my biggest challenge when I was trying to teach myself, you have to teach yourself how to read, like not just to read, but to absorb the information, you know, like for, for reference, mm-hmm. you know, my wife, Emily, you know, she could tear through a Harry Potter book in a week. That would take me like three months, <laughs> three, four months. And yeah, because I, you know, yeah, maybe back when I was in school, like if my eyes glossed over the text, I considered that as I read that. Now it's like if I read mm-hmm. something and I turn the page and I can't even remember what I just read, I will go back and read it again. And I will repeat that until it sticks, because if not, I'm, I just feel like I'm wasting my time. And um, but yeah. no, I, 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 and I think. Glossed. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I just I realized I completely glossed over when I mentioned that it was you who got me into powerlifting. But you did approach me one day in the gym and you, you know, I, I do remember this conversation very vividly because, again, I just feel like this was one of those turning points. And I guess you would call my my lifting career. And, you know, you came up to me and you said, you know, you yeah. I see you in a lot. You train very hard. You know, it obviously looks like you know what you're doing for the most part when it comes of when it comes to moving weights. You know, have you ever considered doing something mm-hmm. with it instead of just coming in here and beating yourself up for the sake of coming in here and beating yourself up? Now, I don't know if those were the words you used exactly, but I do remember that that's kind of how you hinted. Like, I think that maybe it would be worth you doing something with this. And yeah, I thought. And that is really, and then once I committed to it, I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's like, let's do it. Uh, I, you know, never looked back. So like it really, this whole thing with powerlifting with me started because you saw something in me at that time that I didn't even see in myself. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And that, that's awesome. It makes me feel good that I could be a, a part of that that story and that process. And obviously, you know, you've just proven that whatever I saw and made me say that in the moment was a hundred percent there. Yeah. And you know, in every, every competition that I've done, you know, like, cause we've had, you know, I've had the privilege to, to not only like be handled by you in a competition, but to, to be a like to be on the platform with mm-hmm. you and how you approach competitions and for the audience listening i can sum it up into two words holy <laughs> shit <laughs> because <laughs> you're such probably a good summary <laughs> you, 
you are like you're a, an intellectual person. You're intelligent. You are well spoken. You are articulate. Um, you're not like a hyper or or manic human being. You know, um, at least not to my knowledge. But like we show up yeah, on nope. neat day, and you are that person through weigh-ins, through all. <laughs> but the second that like you're you're I don't know what you call them, your spidey senses or whatever, they they kick in. It's like <laughs> that you have given yourself the green light to warm up. You have left. That that Tristan has left. Yeah. <laughs> then, like <laughs> like. I, 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 I've, I can't tell you how many times I've told people because like it, it make like I, I look back on this and it, it brings me joy. Like just watching you pace back and forth because when, when you're in the meets that we've done, <laughs> you know, when Tristan nasal rod is back in the, in the, in the room getting warmed up, especially for like the squat, because it's the first lift of the day and you're like mm -hmm. the only dude back there with like six plates on your back just completely demolishing it. And I'm looking, I'm looking around because the first meet that you and I did together was a COVID meet. Mm -hmm. Am I, it was like, what? It was like a, yeah. there was like 20 lifters there or something. And there was like two or yeah. just, two, I think. And so it wasn't super populated, but like when you're back there warming up, like everybody's watching what you're doing. And I remember, <laughs> that and i'm like man like how cool would that be and not only like does this apply to in the warm-up room at this particular meet and the other meet that we did together that other power for a purpose but like mm -hmm. whenever i first started seeing you at wildwood and when you're in there training and again back to the whole focus thing you know i i i'm sorry i mean maybe some people can do this I, maybe i could do it if i i don't know if i gave it a shot but like you can't just if you're going to put a bar on your back with a, a, a heavy enough load to where like that you could, you know, obviously like not get the lift, even if you're talking like 80, 85 percent, you know, you can't be like having conversations while you're mid set or, you know, just talking to somebody and then immediately getting under the bar. Like for me, I have to be like in my head, like going through my, my, my routines, my patterns and all that stuff. And that was on display seeing you in the weight room, in the warm up room. And whenever you would like every time it seemed like that you were unracking a squat or doing a deadlift or doing a bench, like everybody stopped what they were doing to watch you do what you do. <laughs> and like, uh, I, like, and that's not something I notice. Yeah. And, Cause like, I just remember like being in the, like you're in the leg room squatting and I'm in the upper body room and like, you could hear like people, that's what everybody was talking about. It's like, hey, Tristan's about to squat, about to squat. come on, we got to go watch. <laughs> and, oh my God. And, and like, but it was cool though. And like, and it was so motivating to me because, and I, I know that we've talked about this like over text message or whatever over the years, but I've noticed that in some of the, heavier sets that I've done, whether it be on, we're not going to talk about the bench, but we'll talk about the squat and the deadlift a little bit more, <laughs> but, uh, like people have, all right, those two are fair game. Yeah. Like people have come, like, I've noticed that like, I'm getting ready to do a, a heavy set of squat or like a rep PR on squat or deadlift. And I look around like right before I get ready and just out of my peripheral, like I just happen mm -hmm. to see like kind of watching and, then that that just motivates me even more because I don't want to let them down because they took time out of their workout to give what I was doing attention, <laughs> whether that be somebody uh -huh. I've asked me a spot or just anybody, even if I didn't ask them to come watch, because as you know, like not all, you know, max effort attempts are going to be successful. In fact, I feel like it's probably very difficult to like never miss on those targeted rpe 10 sets for multiple reps you know because you have it depends on the day it depends on what weight you chose how the first rep goes you know there's a lot of yeah. different but you know back to the meat you know just like watching you like in in the deadlift portion like just pacing back and forth like doing yourself talk keeping yourself amped and i walked by your phone 
and the screen was on and you know <laughs> oh, I, I wonder what he's listening to and i'm thinking maybe it's like i don't know something just super heavy and i looked down and it was i think it was phenomenon from thousand foot crutch and i was like ah oh. sounds about right <laughs> and it was like <laughs> Tristan's really like at like peak human performance just out here like jamming to like some like Christian metal and like just <laughs> awesome or you know <laughs> so like that that's like one of like my most fondest memories of like being able to share a platform with you and seeing how you go about doing things and you know all that good stuff I appreciate that yeah and no it's been a pleasure Sure, to get to share the platform a couple times that we have and you mentioned i've gotten to handle you at, at meets and i think correct me if i'm wrong but that one meet was that your first 600 pound deadlift that we loaded up yeah and, went? That, and that that day was the day that i fell in love with powerlifting like yes i had a had a great time great experience Perfect going to my first meet, you know, I met some cool people, you know, I placed, you know, third, I think I totaled, yeah, I totaled 1200 flat as, as you know, at my first meet is a, um, I think then it was an 80, 83 kilo lifter. And, um, but it was mm -hmm. the one at Viking performance in Morgantown where you handled me and we were shooting for, I believe it was a national qualifying total. And, uh, mm -hmm. everything went, everything went great on the squat, but I missed my last bench. And then that caused us to have to, yeah, that's what I was thinking to call a couple of audibles, not only because I, I failed my third bench, but because, um, I think we looked up the wrong qualifying totals at first. We looked up the equipped qualifying totals instead, <laughs> which is yep. insane that the equipped was lower because I just feel like he quit powerlifting, everything should be higher, but I don't know anything about that stuff, so. I agree, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that happened. But man, like, just again, like this, this definitively was the day, the moment where I fell in love, not only with powerlifting, but the community and just everything about the sport, because like, it was just a beautiful moment where, you know, you and I are getting ready for deadlift, for, I got to backtrack just a couple steps here after that third bench that I missed. Yep. I was feeling a little dejected. Yeah. And I was feeling a little bit of fatigued and you were like, I'll be back. Like, just like a straight, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like I'll be back. <laughs> and so you, you leave yep. and come back. Uh, I don't know. However, many minutes later, in with the golden elixir yellow mustard <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> you're like you just walk in and you hand it to me and you go i'll match you shot for shot and like you're not even like lifting you know what i mean and <laughs> I, I remember like okay whatever yeah. you say and we just start taking shots of mustard and like the crowd around us just start, like they stopped paying attention to the people lifting in the in, they started paying attention to the two psychopaths <laughs> taking shots of mustard and <laughs> and then i ended up pulling uh a deadlift that i didn't even like, had in me on that day it looked like we walked back for deadlifts and um you had lowered my, my opener by like i don't know almost 50 pounds i think and you were just like yeah it was a decent amount you were like don't even worry about what's on the bar just go out and pull it and i'm like okay i can do that you also threatened to do some sort of bodily harm to me because i kept doing more than one rep on my warm-ups <laughs> like rep guy like i've, I've, I've had to like, <laughs> yeah. just like you're <laughs> I, I wish I remember what you said to me, but it was some sort of like tasteful threat of violence. And, but I do the first step. <laughs> yeah. 
I do the first deadlift and it, uh, I it smoked it, did the second one. And I'm glad I, I didn't watch that deadlift mm-hmm. back in real time because it moved good, but it didn't move great. And, you know, after the second yeah. deadlift, you're just like, come here. And then, like, we walked outside and we had that, like, that, that, <laughs> like, good handed coaching moment where you're like, you know, you've already won your weight class, you know, you've won there, but if mm-hmm. you want to hit this total, you have to pull 600. And I'm like, okay, let's do mm-hmm. it. And in that moment, like, cause like we did the whole like baby powder thing on like the legs and stuff. That was the first time I've ever done that for a deadlift. And it was weird. Like, you know how yeah. sometimes I'm about to do, cause like, I know you told me that the nerves never really go away when it comes to your meats and stuff. And I don't know about you, but when you're doing some heavy, hundred percent. Yeah. When you're doing heavy training or you're about to do this, like, max effort set or this PR set or whatever you want to call it. Like, you know, the nerves are always there. And that's like another thing that people probably like who don't do this, they don't see like, you know, yeah, you're, you're nervous because you're about to try something you've never done before. And, you know, you're going to have to be mentally, physically, emotionally, hell, sometimes spiritually locked in to be able to get everything to move the way you want it to. And you have to like shake off those nerves to get the job done. But in that moment, I just, I was overcome with this sense of, I don't want to call it confidence, but just calm. Like the, the best way to describe it was just mm-hmm. calm. Like I wanted, I, I wanted to keep myself quote unquote aroused to a point to where like the CNS is ready to go. You know, everything's ready to fire, but I just kept saying yeah. in my head, like, you know, if you ever want to be a champion at this, like, this is where it starts. It's you picking this weight up right here, right now. Yeah. Like, if you were Tristan, what would Tristan do? And he would go out and he would pick this weight up. And <laughs> then I'm like, it's like, oh, I, I think I was up next. And like, that's, that's when the nerves hit me. And the nerves hit me like a truck. But what the nerves didn't have mm-hmm. was a Tristan. And this is another story I tell people is you're like, okay, <laughs> when they call your name, do you want me to hit you? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and oh my God. So like they, they, you know, they say, you know, bars loaded. And so I, I do the um, ammonia and I'm walking out and you just, just, bear paw just like right in like the center of my back and i felt it <laughs> in my body and all the nerves just turned off like you hit me i'm like all right let's go like i'm pretty sure like you all <laughs> me out from behind the curtain and like <laughs> and then i i picked it up and that was to this day my the fit like my favorite like memory of a deadlift, like my favorite deadlift that I've done. And actually I just got a memory, um, not too long ago when I think it was like Facebook about hitting that back in, uh, that was July of 2018 was when that happened. Wow. It's hard to believe it's been five years. I know, I know. And I'm, 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 I'm knocking on that door to, to 700. And I, I'm, I know that I'm close. I just have to keep, you know, doing the little things and uh, keeping, keeping things, mm-hmm. you know, momentum. You know, obviously you've seen that I have switched to the cheater deadlift. Um, so that is obviously 100% of the reason why what I'm doing now. Um, <laughs> honestly, though, man, switching to sumo was like, it wasn't planned um, because, you know, in the USP, I do – in the USPA, I do hold the Maryland record in the deadlift weight class. And, you know, I have pulled 605 for five conventionally. Yeah. Um, but it was just like, I'm going to give this sumo thing a try. And the mm-hmm. first time I did it, I didn't like it. I trained it for about a month and had one bad day and just never went back to it. And then started doing it over the off season, you know, over the winter. Yeah. And then I just, 
I started like once I started to get the technique down a little bit, then I started testing it and testing it and testing it. And, you know, I ended up doing like 585 for six and then doing, you know, I ended up pulling 675 for a, a, like a max effort single. And most recently I did the weirdest um, max effort set of my lifting career. That's 640 for three where I like completely just botched the first rep because the, and I, I watched the video back like half a dozen times. And what yeah. I found was my starting position. I've, I'm, I must need to work on that somewhere. I think my slap, like obviously like deadlift bar, it's, you know, I had to retrain myself just to be able to deadlift on mm -hmm. a deadlift bar. But you have to do it differently than with a straight bar. Like I think the, the thought that, you know, oh, I'm going to do a deadlift. I'm going to use a deadlift bar and it's going to put 20, 30 pounds on my max deadlift. I disagree. I think it's an acquired skill that you can train yourself to do. And if you can get the leverages, down, uh, then, then maybe you can get that to play into your favor. But, you know, one thing that I really liked about stiff bars is that you don't have to ease into it like you do a deadlift bar. Like you just, just rip it, you mm -hmm. know, just load and mm -hmm. lift bar you have to you really have to get your lats engaged and to get the slack pulled out of the bar or else you're going to have to pull the slack and the weight you know because you have more slack to pull with a deadlift bar because of the whip but no doing 640 for three was yeah. um that was that was a big one um for me because like i get to the top and i'm like okay i just told my brother who's recording me that I was going to do this for three and I just made this first rep look like an uh -huh. RPE, like half. And I'm like, well, let's stay tight. Let's lower <laughs> it. And then, um, what I call mm -hmm. the, the deadlift because you know, we have to be quiet when we're deadlifting there for obvious reasons. And oh, is that so a like, thing now? The wildwood deadlift. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk off air about that. Like, we'll, 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 sim we'll simplify oh, Okay, that. yeah. It's different because I don't, just for the, uh, for the crowd, mm -hmm. I used to go to the gym that Cody lifts in currently, and uh, I totally understand not wanting to talk out of turn because you currently go there. I now yeah. have zero skin in the game, so yeah. I was hoping for a little... Uh, exciting take here yeah so what i will say is that you know you would you wouldn't be able to do what you used to do like in terms of like they're they've just really cracked uh, like you're not like chalk is completely outlawed and they've even asked me to like tell them who's using chalk because they keep finding chalk remnant remnants, but they can't track down who's using it. And like, as if I'm going to yeah. like, like snitch on my friends and stuff. And, um, but without going into too much detail, they've really just kind of mm -hmm. very regulated gym. Yeah. And believe me, I've, I've been told Cody, this isn't a powerlifting gym, you know, Cody, this isn't a powerlifting gym over and <laughs> And, um, you know, I, I like, you know, don't get me with that being said, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for the owner of the facility. I just wish that they could run that gym in a way that it could reach its potential as a gym. Um, but you know, with where I'm at in life, mm -hmm. um, my only regret is that when I, when I bought, when we bought our house, we didn't buy a house that could, um, hold a, a home gym and, you know, we've been in our home now. Oh, okay. Since, yeah. We've been in our home now since about 2018. And, um, you know, we've been doing like some renovations to, and to it and whatnot. And, you know, within the next four to four to five years, I'd be like, my hope is to sell it and I'm going to buy a place that I can have my own gym. Um, my dream is to have nice. my own gym, but that's, you know, um, I got a, got a few steps I got to take to to kind of inch in in that direction, but I definitely think that there would be an option here for something like that, where you know the lifters are because 
like I told you just not too long ago, I never remember a time in the 10 years I've gone to Wildwood where there are this many people doing powerlifting, just doing strength sport. And it's like, because whenever mm-hmm. it was, whenever it was you, it started and it was just you. And I want to ask you, Oh yeah. You, I got a, I have a great question for you and I've been saving that for this. And that's how did you, okay. your, your meant like your preparations and your mentality whenever you were training at Wildwood, you know, for some very high level powerlifting competitions, literally being the only one in there doing that type of thing. And, you know, nobody was coming close to the weights that you were doing because from my perspective, you know, there for a little while, it was really only me doing it. Like, obviously we've, we have, we've got some mm-hmm. great people who are there, like, you know, a couple of shout outs, like Matt Jones, um, you know, he's, you know, him and his brother, Mikey, we've got Stanley now in the game. We've got, um, Jadison, we've got Elijah. Elijah's about to do his first meet. You know, we've got Cole who, Schweitzer, who's just a complete <clears throat> phenom and is very, very, very strong. We've got Julia, we've got Emily, uh, Taylor is, you know, wanting to do his first meet sometime mm-hmm. in the future. He would have competed back in the spring, but he tweaked, uh, the peck that he had torn, a few years ago. So we decided to kind of not, not press that envelope with him. Oh, okay. But we've got, you know, we've got some strong people in there now, but you know, a couple of years ago, you know, it was, it seemed like yeah. it was just me and it was like, you know, I just feel like it does make it easier to do these heavier loads and to do these harder sets when you've got people in there that are also doing that. So let me, so what, what is your thought and feel on that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so before I answer that, I just want to, like, one, give a shout-out to all those people because I have seen that community grow um, kind of from the outside. Like I mentioned at the beginning, you know, I still teach in Garrett County, so I hear names come through and I see social media, but unfortunately I'm not in the Wildwood atmosphere anymore. Um, But, you know seeing where it's come from and that's what i was getting at whenever i was asking about the current gym situation it's interesting it seems like um you know there are literally like two gyms in the entire county of garrett county maryland so uh whenever you have a niche like powerlifting or people pursuing strength like that that's becoming fairly large in the county and you are one of the only gyms there i like it's just interesting and hopefully you all can find some a situation that you know bolsters that environment someday i think that would be really cool to see that um now back to to my experience personally um and yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. You know, I, I came up through doing a lot of what I do, like just with me. And very fortunately, I'm a very internally motivated, goal-driven person. So, you know, whenever I learned about powerlifting, I had my goals in powerlifting and I knew those goals could only be met on the platform. So. For me, it didn't matter where I was training for those goals because the end thing was going to happen wherever the meet was. You know what I mean? Um, and we we had talked earlier about like audiences or people watching your training. And it, I think it's natural as you, you get stronger, people are just curious and ask you questions. I never put any value into comparing myself to anyone else in the gym. So like something I'll get now is uh, guys will come up to me and be like, man, you're the strongest guy in this gym. And to me, I, I don't put any stock into that. You know, I'm like, oh, great. But 
I'm really gunning for things that I'm doing on the platform. So whether I'm lifting 135 pounds every single day, like if I could do that and still perform on the platform, I would. I would come in and bench press the bar every day and then just go on the platform and lift whatever. That would be way easier to me. So as far as atmosphere goes, I I have this deep like I've always wanted an atmosphere like that. And I understand how it would be really fun, but I've never been in the position to have it. So I've never needed it, if that makes sense. I feel like it would be very hard if I started in the beginning with all of these focused lifters around me, and then I had to go and be by myself. But because I started kind of as the only guy, I've just kind of kept doing my thing, and it doesn't bother me. I don't know if that answered your question. It was a bit of a rant. <laughs> no, no, I think you answered it perfectly. And I think that that is one thing that you and I have in common because, you know, when I first started lifting weights, like it was me alone in like my mom's basement just training. And when it was the car, I had some mm -hmm. buddies who I was with, but like I – to be honest with you, man, I, I always preferred to train by myself. Like, I think the number one thing that I hear of what stops people from going to the gym or gets them to where they no longer go is because their training partner quits and then they quit. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just don't do that because I also am somebody who's like, I'm very, I'm very critical of myself. Um, I'm very hard on myself. Like, I, I'm never satisfied and, <clears throat> you know, back to like your thing too, because I've had people say similar things to me at Wildwood, like, oh my gosh, like you're the strongest guy in the gym mm -hmm. or what? Like, I don't, I don't, to be honest with you, man, I don't want to be known as that. I really don't. I just want to be known as a guy who goes there and trains hard and pushes himself. And because that's all that I was in the beginning, mm -hmm. because Nobody knew who I was or cared. And most people didn't even know that Cody Shreve was lifting weights when I was, you know, 10 summers ago. So, like, I would go to the gym at night, like mm -hmm. 8, 30, walk and train until like 11 and then go home and then get up at like 6 a.m. for my morning shift at Mickey D's. And, you know, like, <laughs> like I just, I, I have better training sessions when I'm by myself. That being said, I now do have what I would call a perfect training partner in my brother, Taylor, because he just does everything that I do. Mm -hmm. As you know, Taylor was born deaf and I am literally just able to communicate mm -hmm. with him via hand signals and telling him like what numbers to load up and what to do. And, you know, we can have these very intense you know, productive training sessions where we don't really talk a whole lot. And as you know, Taylor's quite the character. So he brings some comedy aspect to the whole thing too. So, um, <laughs> but you know, Taylor also, but, and I've, and I've given my, my kudos to Taylor because like some of the things that, you know, sometimes you like look around in the gym and you realize that like a lot of the people aren't willing to do, they're not willing to do those long workouts or, you know, their nine, <clears throat> their nine back down sets with a certain weight and then do their accessories and then do yep. that or, you know, and then you, you, that's, and I've told Taylor, like, you know, um, you've, you've been doing very well, you know, not many people are willing to come in the gym and just completely beat the brakes off themselves time and time again, you know. I was telling Cole Schweitzer about this the one day when he was getting ready to do his most recent competition. Like he was a, he was just finished up and he just, he had that look, mm -hmm. he had that look, just a tired power lifter. Right. So just like you see like the bags under the eyes a little bit, like just this, like the just sweaty and you could tell that they just are feeling beat up. And it's like, when you, when you're there, that means you, you did what you were supposed to do. And I'm not yeah. saying you have to feel that way each and every time, but, you know, but like, there's just not many people, at least it where I'm at now, you know, now more than ever, are there people there doing that? But like, 
you know, back then, back in the day, there wasn't a whole lot of people that were willing to, to, to go to those lengths. And for me, I was actually just talking to my wife about this last night, but I am driven by this like never ending sense of, or feeling of incompetence. Like I am just, you know, I, I remember you saying, talking in an interview once that it's like, I don't go off program. I don't miss workouts. Like if it's in my program, I'm doing it, Mm -hmm. you know? Like, I can't tell you how many times that like I've, I've finished all of my back downs of my main, all of my work on my main movement. And it's like, you know, I don't want to do these accessories or whatever, but it's like, no, you have to, or, you know, you get four back down sets into your eight or nine total back down sets that you have to do. And like the brain is just saying, make it easier or let's, let's quit. You know, you're very much fighting that um that that voice inside that's telling you to just take the take the easy road and like i just can't do that because i would go home and completely just destroy myself for giving into that and be like you know how can you even take yourself seriously if you're not willing to do the hard things and you know so i'm with you and you know um eventually yeah to have my own like like my own gym, whether it be a public gym or a private gym or whatever, just like, like a home gym type thing. But the, the community of a good, like a, like the community of a gym is, I feel like it is a powerful thing when you've got, especially like in an area like where we're in, where you have a lot Mm -hmm. of smaller workers, like there, there's a reason the gyms get busy after five o'clock and it's like, people are they get up early they go to work they work all day and then they just go straight to the gym and some people just go in and they just train their asses off and i think that's a beautiful thing to see people do that all year round and you know to push each other and to be on the same page to some extent mentally like it drives me to want to be better i firmly believe that you know like iron sharpens iron and you know my favorite gym to go to in the area is grizzlies i don't know if you've ever trained there but um Grizzlies Hardcore Fitness in Frostburg, they couldn't be owned by a better gym owner in Jamie. And, he, you know, he has a love for the sport. He just competed okay. yesterday at USPA Nationals. Um, and I think he I think he took oh, first nice. in his weight. Because mm-hmm. uh, I think he holds a world record in the bench. Oh, but, nice. Uh, Congrats to him. Yeah, and, uh, you know, so I try to get over there when I can. It's just, you know, five minute drive versus an hour drive. And, you know, that's yeah, probably like, you know, first world problems. But, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I do have some facilities in the area, Wildwood being included, that, um, you know, I'm able to go in and do my thing and train hard. And most importantly, be around some like just some true yeah. like bad people that just – they just like to work. They just like to push themselves and to get better. However means necessary. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that leads me to maybe the last question. Cause I know I'm, we're running late, but, uh, mm-hmm. if you've got time for it, I, I wanted to ask you about, cause you re- recently made the transition from, uh, like USA powerlifting to USPA. Which, um, for everyone watching, if you're not aware, basically the gist of that is here in the United States, we have several different powerlifting federations with small different tweaks between them. Um, USAPL, for the longest time, was affiliated with the IPF. They recently had a split, and now it's Powerlifting America with the IPF. But for all intents and purposes, those two have the same types of rules. Stiff bar, two-hour weigh-in, uh, drug testing protocol, and then USPA has two sides. You can correct me if I say any of this wrong because I'm less familiar with the USPA side, but um, they have both drug-tested and non-drug-tested powerlifting. And then it's a 24-hour weigh-in and then the use of a squat bar and a deadlift bar mm-hmm. does that sound about right yeah so um just for the sake yeah, of so saving, i'm gonna try to be as time efficient and chronological with this 
in my response as possible. So let's start. Let's start with the USAPL. So I've competed cool. of six competitions, five of them being with the USAPL, and every single competition I did with them mm-hmm. was a fantastic experience. I think that they're a federation that I would recommend for anybody to go join up. You know, we obviously they had some some drama there with the IPL and whatnot. And, um, you know, the reason that I shifted to the USPA was one reason and one reason alone. And that was because I was training around a, like at Grizzlies. Everyone was in the USPA, you know, like I felt like mm. the only that I knew personally that was training in the USAPL, like, you know, friend of mine was you. And, you know, then I, cause then you mm-hmm. had, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you are now lifting through powerlifting America. Is that it? Correct. Think yeah. Cause I, my ultimate goal is competing internationally through the IPF. And so I had to go with powerlifting America to kind of hunt those goals down. Sure. Well, um, so I'm like, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'd be willing to, to switch and do uh, a USPA competition. You know, the squat bar, yeah, so, but you are right. When it comes to the squat, they use a squat bar. And basically, it's just like a thick, I mean, um, it's like a thicker bar. The, the entire bar has knurling, and it's, um, it's a 55-pound bar versus a 45-pound bar. I don't. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that like that gives you some type of crazy advantage on squat. Like I don't, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, I train with a squat bar. And even when like I competed and had one on my back, it wasn't, I didn't notice like it had, it was on my back and I'm like, Holy crap. Like I can squat anything. Cause I'll get into that because at this, at my last recent competition, that was my statistically worst squat day that I've ever had at a meet aside from my very first mm. competition. So what appealed to me a lot with the U, because I, I really put a lot of thought into doing this because I didn't want to make any rash decisions. But ultimately, it was because, like, I'm surrounded by USPA lifters. Like, let's just let's just hop in one and see how things go. And um, the 24 yeah. hour, like the 24 hour weigh in was very attractive to me. That was probably the most attractive thing about the USPA, because, you know, I am very much stuck in the middle between the 82 and a half kilo class and the 90 kilo class. Like I walk around at like low mm-hmm. 90 and it's like, well, if you want to be as competitive as possible, you know, cut down to 82 and a half. And that just seemed to be a little bit more doable, like with a 24 hour weigh in. Now, long story short, I didn't need the 24 hour weigh in because I was, I was so mm-hmm. honed in with my diet, like, during last prep because I competed last November that whenever I was five days out, I was sitting at like 185. And this was – And I remind me even, it's 182? Yeah, it was like 182.8. That you have think. And mm-hmm. okay. I, was working, I was working with a coach at the time, and he was like, like just go low carb for a couple of days and you'll, you'll make weight just fine. And uh, – but I was able to diet down and I didn't even have to do a water load protocol. And I ended up weighing in at 178. I actually ended up going a little bit too hardcore wow. with the weight cut. Yeah. So, um, and then I'm like, okay, well, I just weighed in. I made weight. I'm light. Now I get to eat like a complete psychopath. And that's exactly what I did. And all that went back and bite my ass. Like, the two hour weigh in is difficult. Don't get me wrong. If you're doing a weight cut, like I remember showing up for power for a purpose in 2020 and I couldn't even flex my bicep because I was so dehydrated. And then you're like, I remember you having me modify Pedialyte's the night before just adding extra salt. And you know, you're like, you come up to me and you hand me this little white pill right before weigh ins. And I was like, what's this? <laughs> It's like, you're going to need it. I was like, what is it? It's, he's like, it's a modium. And I, was, I never take yeah. a modium before. And you're like, whenever that salt hits your system, you may have some, like, distress. And, oh, shit, you were not kidding. <laughs> yeah. I chugged that Pedialyte that had about seven packs of ramen noodles yeah. worth of salt in it. And my guts completely <laughs> t- 
of mush. And um, now this was for the summer raid because you handled me at the summer raid, the second summer raid, not the 600 deadlift, but the one okay. where. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And my, I just felt awful. I felt like I was going to be like, I, I felt sick. And you're just like, eat your rice cakes, drink your water. It's going to go away. <laughs> and uh, it did. Like, then, yeah. like, and it's all that distress just completely went away. Um, the emodium definitely did its job, but, um, with the, and I, and I had a great day that day. And so, but with the, the most recent meet that I did <clears throat> USPA meet, I'm like, okay, now I've got 24 hours to get as heavy as possible. And I went into that eating phase just as I did with the competition is let's do this aggressively. Again, I asked myself, what would Tristan do, you know, in this situation, like Tristan's going to eat. <laughs> like i need quick carbs i need salt i need something you know just as many calories as possible to just get me supercharged for the next day and you know i don't talk about this a whole lot because i don't like making excuses so like don't think that this is what i'm doing mm -hmm. but what had happened was dude i was eating like you know i think eating some junk food to a certain level afterward is like a good thing to like get yourself ready but i just took it way too overboard and when I showed up to the gym the next day to lift, the first thing I noticed was that my belt didn't fit me the way that it normally does. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nope. that's different. So like I was, I was stuck. The belt was either too loose or too tight. And then I started after my first, so I opened with 518 on squat and that I smoked it. I mean, it flew. And after that squat, I started getting cramps in both of my quads. And that's when I realized I, I miscalculated. I did something wrong. I, I did too much of salt or not mm. enough water or something in between. I didn't account for all the sodium I probably ate during that day of eating. And I didn't like drink enough water. I don't know what it was. But my electrolyte balance was obviously very off. So I'm like trying to get my quads like chilled out. I come out, um, my goal was to shoot for the Maryland state record in the squad at the time, which was 562. I had to go for 567 to beat it. And I thought I had it. I had the best mm -hmm. squat prep of, that you could ask for. You know, I ended up squatting 545 for three, 555 for two, um, you know, 510 for six, you know, just amongst some of the other rep PRs I hit along the way. And you know, so I was very confident. I was the most confident I had ever been on squat because squat is always the lift that gives me the most anxiety. And mm -hmm. so I go out to do 547, which was um, the next kilo, the next like two and a half kilos up from like, like 540 squat that I did at Power for a Purpose the last time that you and I had shared a platform. And yeah, I squat it. I down up, you know, put it back. I'm literally about to go walk over to the judges to give them my, my next attempt. And I look over and they've given me a white. It was a red, a white and a red. I'm like, okay, well that didn't go according to plan. So, but then like, I see the judges kind of like in a circle talking and the meat director comes up to me. Now, granted, very cool meet director, uh, Bobby Bolin, um, very professional guy. He explained this to me, I feel like, in the best way that he could. Again, we're not making excuses. Just like you said, to be undeniable. And that's exactly what I'm going to bring to my next competition is an undeniable squat. Yeah. But he said that – so you, he, he said that my depth was good, but they, they called me for a double bounce. They said that my hips didn't hit – depth at the same time therefore they gave me a red light therefore i i didn't get the lift that i was a little like i i didn't expect it you know what i mean like it was i was a little confused and i'm like yeah. okay well push come to shove get it i'm like okay but again i'm still confident yeah. like i still squatted that weight it didn't and give me not that? to interject too much if I could, um, I'll just say, because I know 100% I was actually on a podcast with Powerlifting America this past weekend, and we were talking about 
referee stuff at I IPF Worlds. And I had to say the most diplomatic answer possible. Um, because, as you know, as a competitor, you have to um, respect the referees and respect their decision. Um, sure. I'm in a very unique decision or position where uh, I once again have no skin in the game. That's a made up rule. I'll just tell you, and like you've presented it one way. There is no rule that states the order at which your hips hit depth, you know, unless, so the double bounce rule is as soon as you start coming up, you can't bounce back down again. So that's the explanation of the double bounce rule, um, which I did see the footage of your squat and you didn't double bounce. So um, I think sometimes meet directors and this, this is actually not a slight on them. But I think sometimes you get in a tough position where there's a bad call and you have to justify it with a rule. And sometimes I think lifters just get told complex rules hoping that they wouldn't understand the rules in a rule book. Um, and that's what it sounds like happened. So I just want to, to throw that out there that hey, I know mistakes are made, and I know you can't say much, and I 100% respect that, but I'm going to tell you right now, um, I think it was just a missed call, and those things happen. But like you said, you're going to clean it up, so um, keep going. Sorry, I just had to give that input, because, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I and, I and I appreciate it. And, like, you know, shout out to Josh Guy, um, who I was competing alongside with that day. He was there to help me my next attempt selection. And we're just kind of looking at each other like double bounce. Like I went down, I went up. Like what I don't I don't so mm -hmm. no, lost past that. Again, I got I got a, in in my mind walking away from that, you know, I can I can be the guy where it's like all oh, the refs were out to get me. They cheated me out of a squat, yada yada. I didn't get it done. And which leads me to the next attempt was okay. I could have just I could have played it smart um, and just retaken that 547, but I'm like, you know what? I at least want to go for 550 because I'm confident that that would be there after doing five, five for a double in training. Uh, at this point, my yeah. quad ramping up like nobody's business. I'm drinking loads of water, but you know, once you're on the platform, you only have a handful of minutes between attempts to to get yourself mm -hmm. ready. You know, I, I'm rolling down my knee sleeves and I'm trying to like stretch out and like it's getting to the point where like my one I think it was my right quad would just cramp up like every time I would take a step. And I'm like, OK, well, we're not in an ideal position, but we're going to go out. We're going to do it anyways. Um, I had 551 on the bar and I just didn't have it. I squatted it down and it, it did not come back up. So I don't know if um, mentally I was a little off, but uh, what I tell people is that, you know, I just, I didn't, I wasn't good enough that day. And um, maybe it was mm -hmm. a slight myself of being overly confident in that particular, like, I think you should be confident. I feel like you have to have some level of confidence in the sport because, you know, that's going to oh, yeah. kind of, you know, m move weight. You know, we're, we're, we're pushing the boundaries of like human power you know so like i feel like you have to you know yeah. like a strong atlas stone like you can't just walk up to it all timid and shy and be like well maybe i can do it you know brian shaw doesn't walk out there and like you know tiptoes out there and like whispers to everybody you know like brian shaw's going out he's pumping his fist he's yelling he's getting the crowd ready you know but so um you know, I had to rebound from that, but I had my best bench day uh, at that meet, and my my target at that meet was to was to break the deadlift state record, and that for me, all I had to do was hit mm -hmm. uh, six forty five deadlift, which I did at my at the last meet that I did, but I didn't want to get overzealous and miss it by going up the next two and a half kilos. So after that, I'm like, well, I'll shoot for 300 kilo. And I just didn't have enough in me after doing 645 to hit 660. But I was like, I was okay with that. Um, you know, it was, it, I, w I went six for nine. I did win, you know, best, best lifter, which was cool. And 
you know, credit again to the, you know, my first. Um, yeah, that's experience. awesome. Yeah, my first experience with the USPA was 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 positive. You know, I'm not going to lie. You know, the whole squat thing had me a little confused there. But, um, you know, we'll just that that's one meet and that's not going to be my last one. And, um, yeah. you know, some things happen just like that squat video that you shared where like, I don't know how in the world they called you for depth because that was one of the deepest squats <laughs> I've ever seen. But it's also like just, a, you know, it's an example like, you know. Um, you could sit there and you could complain about the, the, the officiating or you can be like, okay, I just have to squat better. So like at my next meet, yeah. you know, I'm even more tactical and calculated with my squats and to just really make sure that I'm ready to have a, for my squat to be my most consistent lift again on the platform. Because up until this last meet, I hadn't failed a squat on the platform since 2017. But um, yeah. to cap off the USPA thing, so I switched to the USPA after people have been asking me to switch for like two years, and then the thing happened. And I know, I feel like you know what I'm referring to when I say the thing. With the uh, USPA. Oh, actually, so maybe less than you think I would know, because I, uh, long story short, I became very disenfranchised with uh, powerlifting federations and like following powerlifting news when the USAPL and IPF split happened. I, mm -hmm. I got very frustrated with that. So um, I've heard rumblings and like just comments about what happened with the USPA, but I actually don't have a ton of knowledge. I know some bad things happened and maybe they just had some bad actors uh, involved in the organization. And, you know, I, you know, I've, I've done research into it. I've, I've watched, you know, plenty of like IG videos of people trying to explain depth and I'm not going to go into it here. Cause I feel like that information is available yeah. on, on the internet. But like you said, you know, maybe some bad apples and some trees that they shouldn't have been in. And, uh, but I know that it's something mm -hmm. that they're working on the back end to fix and to re -optimize. but, you know, so, um, I, my, you know, my total qualified me to do, so you are a little less than four weeks out from North American nationals. Mm -hmm. and I am about three months out from North American nationals, just, or North American championships, just, uh, two like just different federations, right? So it's the IPL, the USPA. Yeah. And yours is, you know, obviously through the federation that you're competing in. So I'm like, okay, so this happened in the USPA. I could either um, switch to like a new federation because I'm not going to lie. The WRPF seems like a really cool federation. I handled a couple of folks at um, uh, a WRPF meet in, in March. I got to meet uh, uh, Travis Rogers, Papa Bear Rogers on Instagram. If you've ever you've seen any of his stuff. Okay very cool guy and i know that he has a genuine love for the sport and he wants you know everybody to be accountable he wants powerlifting to be a safe fun sport for people to come out and you know be passionate about and all that so i was really impressed by how they ran their competition it is very similar to the uspa with the 24-hour weigh-ins squat bar the deadlift bar um and like drug testing you know, my, I was drug tested at my last meet and it was no different than like what I experienced with, you know, USAPL, like at the end of the meet, you know, they call out a handful Good. of lifters. Yeah. They, they, they said that they do 10% of the lifters. Like, I think they, they test your best overalls, uh, your higher dot scores. And then I think one or two people are selected at random. That's how they did it at, at my last, uh, competition. Oh. Um, yeah, but, that's uh, good. Yeah. Cause obviously you want things to be you know, as fair as possible in terms of that, in that route. But, uh, but I'm like, well, and then it was like Jamie Shiflet from Grizzlies who kind of sat down with me and was like, look, man, like, you know, you qualified for North American championships. Like, you know, you can go and do these local meets all, you know, all day and whatever. And if, you know, you win those or, and whatnot, you know, that's great. But like, you know, um, I think it's time that you get yourself on a national level stage and compete against some of the best people. And, you know, it made sense to me, like, you know, instead of just um, abandoning what I started with the USPA, albeit it was a brief thing, but like, let's finish this out. Let's do North American championships. Mm -hmm. Let's 
um, you know, go out because it's a privilege, man. It, it's a privilege. You know, if I go out and I, you know, and I get beat, it's still a privilege because it's going to make me better. And, you know, every time that I, you know, rip myself out of my comfort zone to do something that I never thought I would do. Like, yeah, you're nervous. Yeah. You kind of freak out here and there through the process of the prep because like, you I mean, you probably understand this, but like I put a lot of pressure on myself for these kinds of things. Like recently we had that festival in, in my, my neighborhood and I did the, the whole like strongman Cody mm-hmm. thing and deadlift in front of a crowd. And like, I put a lot of pressure on myself for that kind of thing. And, um, after it was done, it was like, you know, I'm yeah. glad I did that it's a good thing. And, you know, um, I'm really looking forward to going up to Niagara for this October and, uh, getting the, the opportunity and the privilege to lift some, some really heavy weights with some, uh, very strong people and to hopefully come away with, like, regardless of how like the placings pan out, like just to come away from it being a better, you know, a better lifter, better person, you know, I'm always trying to get better you know i'm yeah i'm a husband I'm, I'm a father you know having to 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 manage all all of that you know as well as to try to be a halfway decent power lifter you know sometimes it can be um you know a lot especially when i want to be as present in my son's life as possible but i also remind myself mm-hmm. that if you're not doing all the things like like you know in my training and whatnot like then i'm not presenting the best version of myself to my son and i you know, ultimately want to lead by example. I want to be somebody that he can look up to and, you know, so, uh, taking on these greater challenges instead of just doing the safe local meets, I think that's the next best step for me. And then once, um, North American championships is, is, uh, squared away this fall, uh, then I'm going to decide on, on where I want to go. But, um, if I'm going to be real with you, uh, right here and right now, I, I'm thinking it's either going to be a continuation with the USPA or a switch over to the WRPF just for, um, you know, so I can do like, a, again, I like the 24 hour weigh-ins. I, I do enjoy the deadlift bar, but I'm not like going to be like, what do they call it? An elitist when you're just like aligned with just one side, like, um, you know, I would do a USAPL meet again. I would do, you know, unfortunately, uh, Vikings not going to be hosting any more sanctioned powerlifting meets. Um, and that is a huge mm. bump because Jerry and Paul run such a phenomenal show and they're just too they good. Do. That facility is just amazing. Like it, it's built to 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 be what it is and that's just a a a badass gym that can host some some nice you know competitions and stuff yeah yeah no they do a fantastic job and i wasn't actually aware that they they were going to do any more section meets um i i was actually bummed whenever usapl and i had to part ways because of that that was probably my biggest uh like uh, reason for upset because I really enjoyed those meets and competing there. So, um, yeah, that's interesting news to hear. And I, I also want to throw this out there, like my view, how it's developed over the years as well. Probably one of my biggest, I can't call it a pet peeve because I don't actually get like upset at the person who's, uh, talking so much whenever they say it but you get people who are very much in the camp of a federation and they'll say like introduce themselves as hi i'm a uspa lifter Mm -hmm. you know and or i'm a usapl lifter and for a large portion of my training career i would say i align myself with that i i really took in the usapl thing i i felt like I stood for what they stood for with the drug testing and I wanted to do the international meets and same thing with the IPF. I, I still have that connection. You know, my morals are aligned with, you know, competing at a high level uh, on a level playing field with drug tested people. That's kind of my overview of what I want to do. Um, But when the split happened, and this is where I'm going to play diplomat and not get into some of the details, but um, 
the way I was treated with the USAPL um, really showed me like, hey, these federations, whether it's USAPL or USPA or whatever, um, it's it's a business at the end of the day. And do they really care about you as much as maybe you care about them? Or do they pay you to say, I'm a USAPL lifter? No. So um, I'm all for, you know, doing whatever meets come up and whoever you align yourself with at the moment to have fun because at the end of the day, we're just lifting weights. Um, Absolutely. We do this for and fun. Yeah, that's what it's all about. And I have to say, <laughs> yeah. I that, like, sometimes I'm in the gym and I'm just pushing myself through this grueling workout. And I'm like, man, I do this for fun. Like, I just... <laughs> You know, but again, man, <laughs> yep. when it comes to, when it comes, and, I, and I'll end it with this, you know, when it comes to training, powerlifting, all that, you know, when I started, I did it for one reason and one reason alone, and that was to get stronger. Because for the majority of my life, I was just this weak little kid. And when mm -hmm. I say weak, I, I was weak. And I fell in love with the process of just getting better. And... I, for anyone listening, whether you've meets before or, you know, you're stronger than, 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 than I, or maybe you're not, or, you know, have never competed before, who, whomever, you know, do this for the sake of just bettering yourself. You know, like I, I am completely unbothered by the folks who, because again, you have to be very careful with things like social media, Instagram, probably number one, because it's like I'll hit this this PR or whatever in the gym just to see like some 17 year old kid do it for like twice the amount of reps. You know what I mean? So it's like there's always there's I feel like there's always going to be somebody out there who's stronger. Like, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. And that's why I don't I don't check like Instagram yeah. and stuff. Day. it's kind of it makes me feel very like overstimulated at times and i, I have things in my mm -hmm. my day-to-day -day real life world that i need to tend to you know mainly like my son and whatnot and you know ultimately like being a dad being a husband a homeowner all that like these are things that i that i have to prioritize over you know powerlifting despite the fact that powerlifting and just weight training altogether is a significant part of of my life and has been for the last 10 years and has only grown more and more as a part of my being over these 10 years. And my hope is yeah. that I'm able to get people like when I see people come to the gym be like, yeah, I've seen your videos and like, you know, it's just cool to, to, to be in here with you and stuff. Like, I think that's super cool. And, um, you know, I remember I was listening to a podcast one day and this guy was like, you know, if you, you know, if you have a family, if you have like outside obligations or whatever, and you don't have the capabilities to completely dedicate your entire life to your sport, you know, chances are you're going to have to be okay with maybe getting passed or beaten or whatever you want to call it by those people. And while I think that's a little subjective, I I think that's, I think it's true for the most part. Like, no, I can't structure my entire life around just doing powerlifting. Like I can't, you know, it's like, Oh, I got this max effort set on deadlifts today. I'm going to sleep for 10 hours and wake up and do my ice bath and right. two hours of meditating. And then I'm going to eat this and that, you know, I have a, I've got a nine to five, I've got responsibility, you know, you know what I mean? So it's like, a, a lot of it is just a lot of management, time management, you know, all that. But truly, I do what mm -hmm. I do because I have a genuine love for it. And I have a genuine love for the people like yourself who I've met along the way that just because of who you are and what you've done and the standard that you hold yourself to. And like it's allowed me to become a better human being. And ultimately, that's all I want to do. And this is just this is fun for me. It's fun for me now. It's been, you know, fun like it was 10 years ago, training by myself at like 11 o'clock at night doing way too many bicep curls. Because back then, we didn't have all this science. When it <laughs> you know what we had, Tristan? We had C.T. Fletcher, right? We had like, I train arm. <laughs> That's right. 
Like it was <laughs> in the damn science. I got 23 inch arms. There's your science. <laughs> oh yep. man. Yeah, no. And I, I don't think I could have said it any better. And you, you really do represent exactly what I, my goal of this whole YouTube channel is to convey. And that's, you know, I think almost too much of social media strength athletes, powerlifters, bodybuilders, etc. Right, the really high level ones that people see tend to be um, like full time influencers. A great example is Russell Orhi, and I'm going to preface this with a big long preface. Um, you know, I, this isn't meant to be positive or negative towards Russ. I'm sure he's gotten a lot of people into powerlifting. I know he's gotten a lot of people into powerlifting and he's been he's huge very good at what he does. Been a huge inspiration yeah. for me. And I, I think what he's doing is a good thing, but at the same time, a lot of those powerlifters, like his full-time job is social media and the gym, which, hey, that's awesome. You know, mm -hmm. honestly, there's a little part of me that's like, oh, that would be a good time. But I think 99.9% .9 of all powerlifters who ever get into the sport will not be in that position. They'll be in the position of you and I, where we have a full-time job and we're working around that and your son that you're working with to be as good of a father as possible. So... You know, I think the more of that that we can get out there and people can see like, oh, we can be really strong and good power lifters without having to have the other things to make it a little easier, you know? Sure. No, completely, completely agree. And, you know, to touch on Russ specifically, man, like it was really watching him like, yeah, the dude is his strength levels are just the dude's phenomenal. I mean, we'll just leave. I mean, we'll just narrow it down to that. He is mm -hmm. a phenomenal strength athlete. And, you know, you could look at somebody like him and go back to saying the whole, like, must be nice type thing. Like that dude, you know, he's worked for everything that he, that he has. And, you know, like yep. him watching him do reps with 700 on like squat and deadlift, like just seeing him do that made me think, okay, I might not ever be able to do that, but if I can use this as motivation and like, I can use this as like belief and translate this, what he's doing as belief into myself that I can get somewhere close. It's like shooting for the moon. Worst case scenario, you land amongst the stars. You know, I squatted mm -hmm. my first pound squat in training after watching his videos because I'm like, you know, why not me? Why, if, if, if he's over here squatting six, 700 pounds, you know, why can't I get 500? Why can't I get 600? You know, cause ultimately mm -hmm. the only person that I want to be is the best version of me. And that has to include, like I said, being a good father, being a good husband, being a good human being, being, you know, just being myself and working hard and trying to spread some positivity through strength and togetherness through strength, you know, I, I, you know, community and, you know, all that good stuff, man. I, I, it's a little bit more than just in terms of the training, but, um, it is again, a very significant part of my life and something I plan to do for a very long time. And I turn 30 next month and yeah. I don't, you know, I'm lifting heavier than I ever have. I'm doing higher intensive and more vol like yep. higher volume than I've ever done. I feel great, man. And I, I look forward to doing this for the foreseeable future. And hopefully one day you and I can share um, a platform at the highest level and we can talk, you know, do something like yeah. this again about where it all started. And, um, you know, every time I see you kill it, man, it just lights the fire even, even farther. So I wish, I wish you the best of luck in your, in your upcoming competition. Um, I don't think you're going to need it because you were just the consummate professional and you were just <laughs> like, I don't know if you've read any of Tim Grover's. Books I appreciate that. Like, I don't know if you've read any Tim Grover's books like winning or relentless, but I think no, you uh -uh. should. 
I think you would take, I think you would get a lot of value out of reading one of his books shortly before your meet. It just talks about like the mentality of like, um, I think they go in talking about like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, how they kind of went about doing things. I think, I think you'd get a lot of value out of that, man. Now, mm-hmm. one last thing, cause I can't not ask you about this to top this and by the way, I appreciate your time today. Thank you for the platform giving me this almost two hours now. Of a oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, to the people who've made it this far, <laughs> I do not deserve this much of your time, but I, I appreciate it very much. So one of my most fond – now, you'll have to correct me if I remember this incorrectly, but one of my most fondest memories of sharing the gym with you is – Okay. I, I th- you were training for – Again, it was either the Nationals in Georgia or the Arnold, whichever one it was. But you, <laughs> mm-hmm. you had brought in like you were doing sets of squat. And I remember you doing a heavy set of squat, setting the bar back, walking to the box that you had there next to the squat rack opening up a bag of McDonald's that you had there and just completely housing like two (laughs) to three, I think they were like Big Macs or something, like back back to back. Please tell me I didn't dream that. Please tell me that that. Probably. Sounds about right. And I just remember like you ate those sandwiches aggressively as you lifted that squat. Like I almost felt bad for the food because you just (laughs) – and I tell people yeah. that, and they're like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah, the dude just like does like this 600 pound squat or something crazy, and then just houses three Big Macs, and is like, all right, time to go again." And that's why you are who you are, man. And that's why yeah. I'm here. And I'm excited to see how far you. I appreciate that. That's a story, you know. I wouldn't have recalled on my own, but you know that. That time period, because it was so much like after working in the restaurant, mm-hmm. my eating schedule was difficult. So yeah, there were many times I, I would prefer to get some calories uh, as soon as possible, even if it had to be like in the middle of the gym, because usually I just like swing by a place. Uh, before the gym, get food, and then go in and start my training session um, while I ate. So, yeah, that's kind of an example of that. And I, I am by no means uh, recommending that people just house some McDonald's during training. My, my diet has progressed to be a little more intelligent than that. But um, you're right. That's part of that mindset of, like, I did whatever I had to do to get the training done. And at the time it was like, Hey, I got to eat in the gym. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was uh that. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad that I, at least I don't think that I imagined it. Um, Cause it, like I said, that was my goodness back in like 2016, early 2017. <laughs> but no, that was uh I, I, another, just nothing but fun. Yeah. Memories of training alongside you, man. For sure. And, Thank you for your time. I think that's probably a good spot to wrap it up. Um, the good thing is once I hit end recording, it won't take you out of here so we can say actual goodbyes. Uh, that, but is there a spot for everyone who made it this far to find you and follow you on your journey? Yeah, so I'm uh, uh, Cody Shreve 17 on Instagram. Um, and that's really I don't I don't do like a whole lot of social media. Uh, so, um, yeah, Cody Street 17 on Instagram. You can just follow me along on on that. And uh, if you follow me uh, from this from this uh, podcast type thing, just shoot me a DM letting me know that that, that you followed me from this and I'll sh- and I'll give you a follow back. So just out of my gratitude. Sweet. Well, all right. We're about to hit that two hour mark. So we'll. We'll close it up there. Once again, thank you for your time. For everyone who made it this far, thank you all. Um, if you made it this far, drop it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe. All that good YouTube BS that I have to say. 
And um, until next time, happy lifting, everybody.